gave me, he had my de debut in 1952. Right. And now I'm on this timeline with this wonderful technology. I can meet people like you. I can spread my word. Yes. That age is just a number. I can talk about the importance of moving your body. I can talk about the importance of fueling your temple mm. with nutritious organic foods. Yes. yes, it's expensive, but you rather pay on the front end than on the back end. Welcome to Body Sculpt of New York, six weeks to fitness podcast where we hope to inform, motivate, encourage, and inspire you to live a healthier lifestyle. And now, here's your host, the president of Body Sculpt of New York, Vince Ferguson. Welcome to Six Weeks of Fitness, episode 216. Thank you so much for joining me today. My next guest is Pauline Adelecki, personal trainer, fitness coach, nutritionist, inspiring, very inspiring speaker, and owner of the Ageless Fitness YouTube channel. She is a firm believer that anyone can get fit and at any age. She should know she's 71 years young and she's bragging about it. Pauline, how are you? I'm so well, I'm so blessed. It's such a pleasure to be here with you and your audience, it really is. Thank you so much. So I can't wait to dive in and share your story with my, with my audience. But you know, okay. before we do that, it's said that age is just a number. And I believe that's true. But why do you think people fear getting older? Well, in, in a crazy way, they cannot help but to fear getting older because the messages that are broadcast to their consciousness 24-7, if I wasn't in my right mind, I would fear getting older too. It's like... You have to take a pill for memory. You have to have surgery. You have to do this. You have to do that. It's just, it's just madness out here. The message that we get about aging and aging gracefully and aging healthy, yeah. it's a message that's not in the airwaves. The only messages that we get are from the pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what pill you should take to do this and to do that. Yes, a pill for every ill, right? A, I like that. I've never heard of that before, but a pill for every ill. Yes. Instead of eating healthier, exercising, moving your body a little bit, okay? Giving your body what it needs, right? Absolutely. I mean, you, you look at the Super Bowl, you look at the NBA, you look at baseball, and it's all about hot dogs and donuts and corn dogs and yes. pizza and you name it. Beer. It, it, it's in beer. It's nothing healthy. Mm. Nothing being advertised that is healthy to eat. Yes. And your body is a living organism and it needs real food in order to function properly. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to get into this. But before we talk any further about this and about what you do to stay in shape so you can inspire those of us who are getting, you know, more seasoned, right? Right. I want to talk about your story. I heard your story and I was so blown away by what you've been through, okay? And I think more people need to hear it, to see, to see that if you can do it, maybe so can they. If you can get through it, so can they. Oh, let's yeah. Start, let's start from... Where were you born and what was your childhood like? I was born in New York City, Presbyterian, oh. Ho Presbyterian Hospital, uh, August 24th, 1952. Had two loving parents born. I think as I look back, I was born in such a good, good era because it was carefree. My mother and father could say, okay, go outside and play double Dutch and be back upstairs at a certain hour. When I would go to visit my grandmother in North Carolina, I could go and I could play outside and be home when the lights come on, mm. the, the street lights. Yes. But now it's, it's just a completely different story. So to make a long story short, I had a beautiful childhood. 
Uh, I went to college. I went to a uh, historical Black uh, college in North Carolina, St. Augustine's College. I went to graduate school at Atlanta University. After completing graduate school at Atlanta University, I could have, and I was going in the direction of teaching. But my 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 spirit, and I think that I do have a, a gypsy spirit, my gypsy spirit said, well, you know, we really, really don't want to do that. We're a young girl, so let's have some fun. Yeah, yeah. So my spirit talks to me like that. I open up the uh, newspaper. I was living in Atlanta at the time, and I saw where they were hiring international flight attendants yeah. or a charter airline called Trans America Airlines. I was living in Atlanta, Georgia at the time. And I went to the Omni International Hotel to, to be interviewed for the job. But when I got into the, into the lobby, then it was filled, packed with people. I mean, it was packed, packed, packed. And I looked at the, um, the people in the, order, in, the, in the lobby and I said, oh, it's no way that I'll get this job. How many people, competition? <laughs> right. And keep in mind, this was 1974. And this was in Atlanta, Georgia. And Atlanta was, Georgia was very, very, very racist at the time. And I'm saying to myself, mm, no, I can't do it. So I, wa I walked out the lobby and I got in my car. And when I got ready to start the car up, I heard this voice and it said, go back into the lobby. Really? And I said, it was God. I, I said, Father, you saw all of those people in the lobby. It's no way in hell. It's no way. It's no way. The voice said, go back into the lobby. Hmm. As soon as I go back into the lobby, as soon as I go back into the lobby, this young lady walks up to me and hands me an application. She says, you're here for the job. She says, we have so many people here. She says, here, just take this application and fill it up. Mm, just like that. Just like that. I did that. I sat down. I filled out the application. It took me about 20 minutes. And she said, when you finish with the application, just come to me and give it to me. So I did that and uh, I handed her the application and I thought she was going to dismiss me and tell me to take a seat. Right. So she starts a conversation with me and she starts going over my questions and she starts asking me, you know, the responses to my questions. I see you are originally from New York. If you happen, if you just happen to get the job, hmm. uh, we have two uh, bases that you can be based out of. You could be based out of uh, Oakland, California, or you could be based out of JFK, New York. Yeah. So, and I had been in Atlanta for four years and I was ready to get back to New York. So I said, oh, that, that wouldn't be a problem. I, I would love to go back home. I would love to go back to New York. Yeah. And she says to me, oh, she says, oh, if that's the case, keep in mind, we've had just a general comfortable conversation with one another. Yeah. And unbeknownst to me, I didn't know she was interviewing me. I'm a and, Yes. And she said, well, um, if you happen to get the job, how long would it take you to move all of your things? Because I see you've been at in Atlanta for four years. How long would it take you to relocate back to New York? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I, I could be back in New York in less than two weeks. Oh, really? She, she said, congratulations, mm -hmm. you have the job. Really? I almost fainted. Thank you. There are other people still waiting to be interviewed, right? And the lobby was packed. Yes. Other people. And this woman just walks up to me and hands me an application. Unreal. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, what, what do you attribute that to? <sighs> to my God. Mm. To my God. He knew. He knew that. I didn't want to stay in Atlanta. I didn't want to go the traditional route of education and teaching. He knew that I had this 
curious spirit about myself. He knew that I love to travel. So he said, okay, let me put the icing on the cake and give you what you want. Mm. Mm. So it was a it was the best job that I ever had in my life wow. besides what I'm doing right now. Mm. And uh, I got an opportunity to fly all around the world. And it was wonderful. I mean, I had friends in Lisbon. I had friends in in Amsterdam and Frankfurt and Munich. It was just wonderful. I had a, a, a telephone book like this. Wow. You know, when, when I got in, when I got into a city, all I would have to do is just dial up one of my friends. Hey, I'm in Munich. Great. Wow. I'll come to the hotel. I'll pick you up and we'll go dancing. That's amazing. <laughs> so it was absolutely wonderful. And being a young girl, if we're going to be honest, you're flying around the world looking for your husband. Oh. <laughs> but when I remember, uh, I had a long flight. Uh, I did. I, I was in Paris for a week and I had to go to Lisbon. And the beautiful thing about these this airline is that you had nice layovers. I mean, you laid off, you could lay over in a, in a city for a week. Really? With expenses pay, hotel, everything paid. You can lay over there for a week. Wow. So this particular time, I, I did Paris. And I was in Paris for three days. Paris, Lisbon. Lisbon, four days. Lisbon, back to JFK. JFK rest for two weeks. Two weeks? Yes. Wow. So then when I get home, I go through the newspaper and I see this advertisement. I love art too. Treasures of ancient Nigeria. Nigeria, <laughs> yes. Wow. And I said, oh, I would love to see that exhibition. And I went to see the exhibition and that of all places was where I met my husband. Mm, let's talk about that, yes, yes. That's where I met my husband. And uh, it was, uh, it was it was a fairy tale. It was a fairy tale. Mm. It was a fairy tale because I was minding my own business. I wasn't looking for anybody. All I wanted to do was see the art. Okay. So this gentleman comes up behind me when I'm looking at an African piece. And he says, oh, that is lovely, isn't it? And he has this British, British accent. British. I, I just couldn't place it. Huh. But in any event, when I turned around, I saw him and uh, his name was John. He introduced himself to me and we started a conversation and I, he could tell that I really didn't want to converse. All I wanted to do was see the rest of the exhibition. That's it. Yes. You've been, have you been to the Metropolitan Museum of Art? Long time ago. Yes, I was. I was there before. So you, you're familiar with this long staircase that they have right in the middle, right? right? Yep. So I stayed at the exhibition for, I stayed in the museum for an hour after I had met him. And I decided to leave the museum. And as I was going down the steps, he surprisingly was on the other side. And when I got to the end of the steps, boom, we bump into one another. Amazing. And he says, oh my gosh, what a coincidence. I have to take you out to lunch. Mm. So being a New Yorker, our radars are up. Of course. But the I said, well, let me scan this guy and make sure that he's, that he's safe and he's not a lunatic. Right. <laughs> and we went out to lunch and uh, it, was, it was fun. It was like talking nonstop. Really? Conversation. It's very easy, easy with one another. And then mm -hmm. after that, I say, well, look, I have to get ready to go home. He walks me to the train station. May I have your number? I give him my number. And then when I get home, he gives me a call. He says, I just want to make sure you got home okay safely. Yes, I got home all right. I have canceled all of my engagements for the next for tomorrow. Hmm. May I please take you out to dinner? 
Really? This is what he did for you. <laughs> what did he so, know? So again, we go out to dinner. We laugh, we talk, we dance, we laugh, we talk, we dance. We just have such a wonderful time. Wow, fairy tale. It was a fairy tale. tale. And then when I get in, then when we get in the taxi for me to come home, he uh, is quiet. And I say to him, what's wrong? Did I say something to offend you? Hmm. And he says, do you really want to know what's wrong with me? And I said, yeah, tell you, tell me what's wrong. I want you to be my wife. Wife, not even girl. Wife. Wife. Not wife. What? <laughs> and I say, you're mad. Yeah, you're crazy. What? You're insane. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you don't know me. Right. I don't know you. What are, what are you talking about? Exactly. Exactly. So he says to me, well, look, if it takes you five, six, seven, ten years to get to know me, that's okay. Hmm. Just let me go downtown and put an engagement ring on your finger. Really? <laughs> and we can be engaged for as long as you like hmm. until you get to know me. Really? So it was a long, a long to make a long story short, we got engaged, we got married. I uh, moved to Nigeria. He was a very, very, very wealthy man. How wealthy is wealthy? I would say around uh, around the ranks of a. Um, Like an Elon Musk. Oh my goodness, like a billionaire. Yeah, he was very, very I'll, no, I'll call him a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Okay. Over 100 million. Oh, incredible. Land. Land, you houses, name it. Real estate, all over the place. Everything. Everything. Servants. servants? Definitely servants. Definitely. De servants, chauffeurs. Really? What, look. You name it. Really? So you went from New York, Bronx, I believe, to right. living in mansion, living in wealth, living in wealth, um, living in living in wealth, wealth, and having a very cosmopolitan life. Yes, yes. I mean, we would fly. We had homes in West Africa. We had homes in Lome, Togo, and Abidjan, and Lagos, Nigeria. Wow. We wow. had a home here in New York, so uh, it was a very cosmopolitan lifestyle. Wow. To make the long, to make the story short, because it is a very long story. Amazing story, yeah. Uh, my husband was a land developer, and he was going to build uh, a wonderful. He, what he wanted to do and what he was in the process of doing because he hired the best engineers from Amsterdam and the Netherlands mm. to pump sand on the lagoon to make land. And they actually did that. And he made hundreds and hundreds of acres of land. Wow. He developed nice. hundreds of acres of land. And to the point where I can honestly say, if you've ever seen seen or seen pictures of Dubai. Oh yes, of course. The architects and engineers hmm. took his plans and used that for Dubai. Unbelievable. That's how advanced he was. Wow. So um to make a long story short, the government, the Nigerian government saw what he was up to. Hmm. And uh they said, ah, oh, this is too much for one man. And uh, they had him killed. Oh, they had him killed. They had him killed. They had him killed. And, uh, you know, I at that time, I had two small children. Yeah. So I had to mm -hmm. uh, escape back to New York with my children and uh, start all over again from scratch. And you didn't have I mean, all the wealth that he had, though. All the wealth that he had was poured into this development that he was making. And uh, 
all of the money was in Nigeria. And he often said to me, once this gets off the ground, I will, I will give you as many mansions in the state as you want. Mm. But this is our top priority right now. Wow. wow. So I came back to New York with nothing. Nothing but the two kids. With, but my two children who saved my life. How because if I, didn't, if I didn't have my children, yes. I would be, which I was for a minute, sitting in darkness, mm. being very, very depressed uh, and uh, very sad. But they were the, uh, my catalyst yes. mm. in allowing me to get up from my sadness and keep on putting one foot in front of the other. <clears throat> Amazing, absolutely amazing. Now, but you, but you also needed some type of family support here in New York. Yes, and praise God, my, my mother and my father were still alive. Yeah. So they were very supportive. My, my friends, you know, would check up on me and everything. But, uh, and praise God, I had my education so I could fall back on my education. God. Yes. So I, uh, I started teaching. Teaching. I, started, I started teaching and uh, I did that for about until the children were 12 and 13 and we lived in the Bronx and I wanted to be home when my boys came home from school. I wanted to know who their friends were. I wanted to know who they were hanging out with. And I, I was, I am a, ver a good writer. Great. So I decided to step out on faith Hmm. and uh, start my own writing company. Hmm. And that's what I did. And uh, that was great. That was great. It enabled my, for me to keep a roof over my head and enable me to put my oldest son through university, Syracuse University. He's an electrical engineer, nice. works for Saudi Aramco. Now wow. he works for uh, the Department of Energy. My other baby boy went into the military. Yes. He is a retired Navy SEAL. Nice. One very few African American Navy SEALs out here, and he's one of them. That is amazing. That is so amazing. God has been very good. God has been very good. And what I want to tell your audience is if uh, if it doesn't kill you, whatever you're going through, yes. trust me. It's going to make you stronger. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. So that is a, a taste of what you've been through. Yes. And now, right? Just a taste because oh, I know yes. the story gets even deeper. And I believe it should be a Netflix movie one day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because now, but I always hear you talk about God, your faith, and everything. How, into, how important was your faith to get you through this? was tremendously important and I you know I praise God number one for my mother and father but I really praise God for my grandmother mm. because she laid the foundation Grandma. she grew the roots of faith yes. she was I think my grandmother was born like right like 18. 80, something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, she was like one step out of slavery. Slavery, yes. yes. And uh, she was married, and she married a man of God. And mm. when she was carrying her fourth child, he, got, he died. Mm. The fourth child. Her fourth child. So when her fourth baby was in her stomach, her husband passed away. Oh, man. Wow. So she mm. really, really leaned on her faith and she was very devoted to it. She was similar to the Jewish tradition. On Sunday, Sunday was her Sabbath. Hmm. And no, no work, no kind of work was done. All we were doing was praising God. That's all. That's it. <laughs> wow. That was it. So my grandmother, my mother, my father, I grew up in a Christian home. I saw it. I witnessed it. I witnessed this God's favor mm. upon my family. Yes. So I had, I had no other choice. 
Yeah, but to survive and not only survive, but thrive. Yes. Well, so now you are, so what brought you to the fitness part of your life? You I have always been active. I have always been active. And I really turned the volume up uh, with my fitness after my husband passed away. I have 17 flights of 17 flights in my building. Mm. And uh, when my children were young, before they went to school, before they would wake up, I was up at five o'clock in the morning and I was running up and down the steps five mm. times, 17 flights. 17 and flights. 17 flights up and down, up and Oof. down down and I did it three times before the boys before I woke the boys up for Amazing. school Amazing. and in that in that movement going through that movement yes. it was like a movement meditation hmm. you know I would be talking to God he would be talking to me I would say for example father you see the, ch the children their shoes their feet are getting big. Where is the money going to come from <clears> for the <throat> shoes they need new clothes what father and he would always say, that's not your business. Hmm. That's not your business. Just keep on putting one foot in front of the other. Wow. And keep on trusting me. Yes. Keep on trusting me. Hmm. Now, I'm not here to tell you that sneakers and clothes fell from the sky. Right. No, that wasn't the fact. But the thing was trust. Hmm. Just trust that God has you. Just wow. trust it. Believe it and know it. And watch what happens. Mm. And what happened? He made a way. He made a way, Vince. Wow. He made a way. He wow. made a way. Wow. I mean, I, I would meet people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was teaching. But it was, you know, soul income. I would meet people. I, I would go in the store. And somebody behind me would pay for my groceries. I didn't know them. Wow. I never saw them before. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. That's amazing. That is amazing. That just goes to show, too, that God is looking out for you. He's looking out for me. He's looking out for you. He's looking yes. out for all of us. But you have to trust and believe, right? You have to trust. You have to believe. You know, and the funny thing about it is even if you don't trust and believe, <laughs> that's okay. That's he it. still has your back. He still has your back. That's love. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's what, yeah, that's, that, that's what he is. He's love. Yeah. He's love. I truly, truly believe that. And now, because now you're spreading your love through fitness. Now I'm spreading my love through fitness. I'm, I'm encouraging. I'm motivating. Yes. Mainly women. Everybody though. Mainly yeah. women that once you reach a certain age, it's not over. And as we were talking about in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting these signals about aging, aging, you need yes. this, you need that. Yes. And once you're over 50, especially if you are a woman, you're not attractive anymore. You are, you know, your body is not the way it used to be. Society is just giving up on you. Mm. And again, I praise God that he has given me the platform. Not only that, but he put me on this timeline. Yes. that we're on right now mm -hmm. to tell women and men that yes. it's not over once you reach a certain age and that as long as you have breath, mm -hmm. the life of breath in your lungs, you can do and accomplish anything you set your mind to do. But the first thing you have to do is take care of yourself. Yes. You have to take care of your, of your temple. You have to take care of your mind. You have to treat your mind as if it were a dozen eggs, you know? <laughs> it, it, you have to be very, very careful what you let in because what you let in, you're getting these signals. Mm -hmm. you, should, you should get Botox. Yes. You should get plastic surgery. Yes. You should do this being a woman. You should get this anti-aging cream. Right. Yeah. And who is selling me anti-aging cream? 
young girls in their 20s and 30s. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Who shouldn't have to worry about aging at that point, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So again, you know, I praise God that he put me, he made me, he had my de debut in 1952. Right. And now I'm on this timeline with this wonderful technology. I can meet people like you. I can spread my word yes. that age is just a number. I can talk about the importance of moving your body. I can talk about the importance of fueling your temple mm. with nutritious organic foods. Yes, yes it's expensive. But you rather pay on the front end than on the back end. Mm, yes. With the medical bills that have had hundreds of thousands of families yes. claim bankruptcy. Yes, because of the medical bills. Because of the medical bills. Mm. But what if you exercise, ate healthy, and wouldn't have, you wouldn't have to worry about such medical bills? You really wouldn't. You know? You really but wouldn't. But let's talk about exercise for those who are interested and in how you are able, because I'm going to show video when I, uh, you know, when I put this out of you exercising. So they're going to see you exercising. Oh. Uh, I want you to sit, tell my, my audience, okay, what, how many days a week do you work out? It, you know, it's, it's really funny. It is a habit. Mm. And, you know, sometimes, most times, most times I have to say, Pauline, you got to take a break. You got, you got to rest this day, you know, and I will have little debates with myself. Okay, I won't go crazy. I'll just do some ab work. <laughs> and then self says, you have to rest the body. It's a habit because I love the results. I love the side effects. Mm. I love the, I love having a clear head. Yes. I love being able to eat what I want to eat. I don't have any restrictive diet. I love wearing the clothes that I like to wear. Can you imagine a 71 year young lady wearing shorts? I see it. You know? <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Being on, uh, being on social media with, her exercise bra and her, I mean, it's just wonderful. Looks and great. Thank you, my doubt. <laughs> if, if I can do it at 71, surely you can do it at 40, 50, 60. And look out. If God gives me 80, 90, and 100, mm. look out. Mm. I'm going to still get after it. Yes. 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 So you work out. So you work out pretty often. Sometimes you have to tell you tell yourself to slow down because rest is, is also a, a very important rest part. is very important. So rest to answer is. your question, I work out about six days, five to six days a week. Okay, five to six days a week. Now, how important? Uh, how much of those exercise um, days are weight training days? Strength training. Strength training. Uh, I put strength training. I mean, I don't go really crazy, but I do strength training just about every day mm. do you because do I do I, yeah. I do calisthenics. Do calisthenics, and, and my body is my weight, so that's my strength training. Okay. And you know, I'll do upper body, then I'll do lay, lower body. You know, doing the squats and whatnot. Squats. And then one day, you know, I'll devote it to cardio, and that's running up and down the steps or getting on the treadmill or jumping rope or something like that. And I've seen your abs. So you do the, the abdominal exercises quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. The abs, really good, really good. And so you, you do a total body workout. Total body workout. Right, that's important. But why is weight training or strength training important for women, especially women? Oh, that's such a good question. Because as we age, we lose a little bit of our bones each year. And you want to protect those bones by developing and strengthening your muscles. Because your muscle is the organ that is, that is covering the bones. 
And sadly, <clears throat> many falls, or maybe about 20% of deaths are resulted from the elderly from falls. They're falling in the shower, they're falling in the bathtub, they're mm -hmm. falling in the snow, they're tripping over their feet. Yes. And they have not done the strength training, number one, to protect their bones, number two, to, to protect their balance. You want to incorporate balance exercises into your routine. Yes. And if you don't have that, you know, you're setting yourself up for mm. death. Mm. I mean, can you imagine you fall and you break your arm at 70 or 80 and then within two weeks you're dead? Oh, that's hard. It's hard. Or you break your hip or your, yes. your leg, whatever. Yes. And you're dead. Yes. From yes. a fall. From a fall. Mm. So it's important what you're doing. And I believe that you found your, your purpose now in life. Like all this seems to have brought you to this point where now you're shining because your message needs to be heard by so many people, you know? And, and I like what you're doing and I like how you present yourself because, and I like how you can really gear your message towards women to anybody, but especially women. Because I know women who are afraid to work out with weights. They think they're gonna get big like men. Yes. Right, that's a fear. But to but love yourself. You have to love yourself. Love yourself enough to take care of yourself, right? Love yourself and stop comparing yourself to other women. True. You know, work exactly. on you. Yes. yes. Comparison is uh, the greatest thief of joy. Mm. You know, just concentrate and focus on you and watch what happens, no matter what your age. Most definitely. Do you um, do you believe in lightweight training or do you try to lift heavy weight to challenge your muscles? Oh, I'm always challenging myself. Okay. I always challenge myself. I mean, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I lifted very light, my muscles would come out of my body and say, stop playing. <laughs> Let's get serious. What are you doing? <laughs> Your body speaks, your body don't, your body don't play, right? It's like, hey, I know what's going on here. <laughs> now, a very important part of this, in addition to weight training, calisthenics, is nutrition. And as you talked about it, I believe that you are a believer in a plant-based diet. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, I am a believer in a plant-based diet. But you know what? what's really rocking my boat? We live in such a divisive time right now everything is just so divided yeah. everything yes yes the, the the vegetarians against the carnivores the carnivores against the plant-based it's just terrible so what i'm saying is whatever rocks your boat all i want you to do is just be healthy check your blood levels let your go and find out get your blood work done and see if what you are eating is really balancing out everything in your body and you're not you don't have a lot of cholesterol you're not just see if your diet is is suitable for your temple yes Hmm. My diet, being vegetarian, plant-based, is suitable for my temple. How do I know this? Is because maybe about five five years ago, I can't remember. Time goes by so fast. Yeah. I uh, I went to Spain and I, I I studied in Spain for three months. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to learn the language, and I was having fun in Spain. I was drinking the sangria. I was eating the food. And then when I came back to New York, I put on some pants and I said, what's wrong with these pants? <laughs> it wasn't the pants. It was me. I had gained so much weight. Really? And then the next day I went to the doctor and the doctor said, I don't want to see you in six months. I want to see you in three months because your cholesterol is so high that I have to put you on statins. What? Really? That's all I, that's all I needed. That's to what you hear. needed to hear, right? <laughs> so I, I, I 
went back to my vegetarian diet mm -hmm. seriously. There you go. Wow. And then continued to work out, lift the weights, do the cardio. Within three months, I went back to my doctor. The doctor says to me, he looks at the blood work. He says, what did you do? He said, your, no your numbers are excellent. Mm. What did you do? <laughs> and I said, I, I just went back to my plant-based vegetarian diet seriously. Wow. Wow. And it that's why I, it works for me. Yes. It works for me. Yes. I have more energy mm -hmm. than the Duracell bunny. <laughs> for real <laughs> yes yes now that's amazing because a lot of people like you said there's vegan versus carnivores versus paleo or whatever it is and it's it's also really one diet may not be for everybody we're not you know we're all very unique we're very unique right right you know but my message of plant-based living organic foods makes sense to me though yeah work exceptionally well for this temple that i'm in and yes and i believe for most temples you know because food is information oh that's good it's information it's, it talks to your cells it speaks to Absol your cells. absolutely absolutely so you're not if it's eating dead food it's not saying anything <laughs> i'm just i'm just saying so that's why we need to eat more living food. We need to eat more living foods. And if I'm not mistaken, if you're eating steak and hamburgers mm -hmm. and cancer sticks, a.k.a. hot dogs, yes. that stuff has to rot in your body, in, in your, your stomach, yes. before it can be used. Mm. Yes. And what is happening? Diabetes. Oh my God. Heart disease, colon cancers. And it's all, and I read an article recently that a, young, a lot of young people are getting heart disease now. You, you took know? the words right out of my mouth. I mean, and children with type 2 diabetes as yes. young as eight and nine years old. Yes, yes. It breaks my heart when I when I go to Costco's. Mm. And they I mean, people love the food at Costco's, the hot dogs and the soda. I mean, buy two hot dogs, get one free. Some, some kind of madness like that. Yeah, economical. <laughs> you, it's cheaper to, you know, it's cheap, cheap food, but you pay in the long run, as you know. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. As you know. So uh, I am a, a plant-based vegetarian advocate. I really am. Hmm. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're sharing that with people because, again, it makes sense. Even if you don't, even if you can't eat plant based all the time, I mean, maybe eat more plant plant based than than not. I mean, absolutely, helps, absolutely, you know? I agree with you. I think the Mediterranean diet is the most successful diet in the right. world. They include fresh, wild fish in their diet. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's yeah. a good thing. But I the question, so. the the question is. How fresh, how wild are the fish today? I mean, when you look at the waters, the, the oceans, yes, and the pollution in the oceans, the plastic, yes, and yes. the chemicals that are mm. in the water. So how wild and fresh can that be? Not very. And that's why you need to work out, you need to eat healthy, you need to hydrate yourself so that you can eliminate a lot of the toxins in your body. Um, I believe in intermittent fasting. I think that's a very important tool. Oh my well. gosh, I agree with you 100%. You know, my first meal is not, as a matter of fact, I just had my first meal before talking to you because during throughout the day, I, of course, I worked out. I yeah. had my protein shake and then I had some seeds and some nuts and some fruit. You don't need to eat. You don't need to eat four, five, six meals a day. You don't need, you have to give your body a, a yes. break. Yes, yes. That body is trying to break down that food. And it, and when you, that digestive system is using a lot of energy. Yes, it is. Yes, that's what it takes to break down the food. But you're right. I used to be, I used to be a bodybuilder. And that, I was always telling people, you got to work out five, six times. I mean, eat five, six times a day, five, six. That's something that I ascribe to, and I was spreading that false rumor for years. 
So I found out that's, that wasn't true. And it made sense. Your, your body it needs time to rest, okay? And otherwise, every, every time you eat, your insulin levels goes up and insulin levels store is fat, you know? So what are you doing? So now I talk about just intermittent fasting, one or two meals a day, if that works for you, you know, but move your body, eat healthier and move your body, walk more, at the very least walk, right? I say? agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, <laughs> when you go to the hospital and uh, you have surgery, the day after, they say, okay, let's get up, let's walk, let's move the body. Right. You have to. Yeah. You have the elderly in nursing homes and, you know, they they don't have bowel movements. Why? Mm. Because they're not moving not, their not body. Moving their... They're just laying in a bed. They're not moving. Yes. If people knew how important movement was to their to their life, to their framework, Yes. I was, I would, you know, I was getting ready to say it would be a different story, but then again, I don't know. <clears throat> you know <laughs> Question, see what's happening out here today. You really don't. Well, during the pandemic, when they tell it, told everyone to shelter in place, people moved less and they ate worse. Okay. Mm. And I said to people, you're stacking up in all, you're stocking up in all these, all this toilet paper and you're not eating any fiber. You're not moving. So what do you need the toilet paper for? You're not going to the bathroom. And it's, you know, it's funny, but it's true. You know, Absolutely. people gained Absolutely. a lot of weight because they wasn't moving. They weren't eliminating because they was staying home, not getting any vitamin D. Okay. So it hurt a lot of, a lot of us. It hurt a lot of people. And eating junk. And eating, eating junk. You no, know, you go to Costco's, you're stocking up on all the wrong stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is that right? so true? That's and so now, true. And I'm not going to hold you much longer, but you have, you, like I said, you're a personal trainer, nutritionist, inspiring and motivating, motivational speaker. We all know that. But how can we talk, talk about your programs? What do you have to offer the public? Okay, it's so funny. What, what, you have to let me know when this is going to be put out. Because as we're speaking right now, I'm working on an app. Whoa. I am working on my own app devoted to women in their 50s and 60s. I, I have exercises. I have meal plans on there. I have motivational speeches to make sure that you keep and stay with the program. Oh. So I'm working on this app. Yes. And hopefully the app will be completed like the first week of March. The first so okay. I can give you the information mm -hmm. and you can post it for those who would be interested in having a fitness program designed specifically for them. Your meals, your yes. workouts, yes. everything is going to be right on the app. That's why I said earlier, I right. praise God that I'm on the timeline that I'm on right mm. now. Yes, you but, are. Of course, I am on Instagram, Pauline Adeleke. Yes. And as soon as I get ready to launch that app, you know I'm going to talk about it on there as well. Exactly. Yes. Yes, you are. So where, where else can they reach you or see information about you? Uh, my YouTube channel, Ageless Fitness Lifestyle. Ageless Fitness Lifestyle. That is mm -hmm. beautiful. Anything else you'd like to share with my audience before? Uh, well, first of all, I just like to thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share your platform to talk about the importance of fitness, to talk about the importance of overcoming challenges because you will overcome them because this thing called life is not a walk in the park. It's not easy. And everybody is going through something. Yes, yes we are. And if, if you are, know that you will get through it. So, you know, thank you for fitness and, you know, just allow me to sprinkle some motivation and inspiration on your listeners. Uh, 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 
it was only a little taste of what you always offer, but I really appreciate it. I really, truly do. And I'm sure my audience will as well. So Pauline Adelecki, on behalf of my nonprofit organization, Body Scope of New York, and Six Weeks of Fitness, I truly want to thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you so much, Vince. Thank you. <laughs> and to my listeners and viewers, I truly hope this program was informative, encouraging, and inspiring, and that you will continue tuning in to my Six Weeks of Fitness podcast. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please leave them in the comment section below or email me at Vince at SixWeeks.com. And please don't hesitate to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And remember, we don't stop exercising because we grow old. We grow old because we stop exercising. Hi, right, Pauline. <laughs>